Willie Sneed calling out Greg Roman's offense was so nice that he decided to do it twice. Since we about to have some coach talk, let me put on my coach hat so we can break it down the right way. So team, keep it clean. Love y'all, by the way. Hope everything is going good for you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. But anyway, team, keep it clean. Willie Sneed, uh, he was just interviewed by Tyler Dunn uh, at GoLongTD.com. And in this interview, there was a piece where he broke down how he feels about this current Ravens offense. Uh, the question that was asked to him um, is, was future Hall of Famer Steve Smith correct to lambast Roman scheme as elementary. Uh, is this why Marquise Hollywood Brown asked for a trade? Willie Sneed shed some light on that. So let's just get straight to that part because I know that's where, that's why we all came to the video, right? Let's get to it anyway. And it's not just the 70-30, right? We heard Steve Smith ran on NFL Network. I'd imagine he was speaking for several Ravens receivers on the route concepts or lack thereof with Greg Roman. We ain't even got to go over that. We done heard everything that Steve Smith Sr. said. Kurt Warner, all, all them boys. Anyway, Snee said, yeah, it's tough. When we're comparing Greg Roman to a Sean Payton offense or Greg Roman to a John Gruden offense, it's like night and day. And see, the reason that he used those two offenses as comparisons it's because that's what he played in. Anyway, he said there's a lot more creativity in the passing game. Uh, I mean, again, we know Greg Roman's strengths. His strengths are the running game uh, and the tight ends. That's where he specialized. And when he has running quarterbacks, quarterbacks that could take off. But anyway, um, if the Ravens had more creativity in the passing game, and this is my favorite part, and they put more emphasis on it during the season. That was my favorite part of the whole thing because this is a lot of what we've been saying on here too. You don't got to completely change everything, but if you really, really focus on that passing game a lot more, then you can get a lot more out of it. And then it'll be one of those things where, say for you get to the playoffs and your plan A is obviously going to be to run the ball. We, we know that. We, everybody knows that. But plan A is going to be to run the ball. Say for instance, your plan A gets stopped. You're not looking around like a deer in the headlights like, oh, man, what do we do now? Plan A doesn't work because that has been one of the Ravens' biggest problems throughout is when plan A doesn't work, what's plan B going to be? Them not having a reliable plan B come playoff time. The lack of being prepared in the playoffs. But anyway, let's get back to the article. So if the Ravens had more creativity in the past the game and they put more emphasis on it during the season, I think more receivers would be open to coming and we know, like, the receivers don't want to go to the Ravens. In fact, I mean, we just had a receiver want to get off the Ravens. Uh, but receivers don't want to come to the Ravens because... And this, this is not even just a Greg Roman thing, though. See, that's where things get even more spicy. Because it's easy to be like, hey, Giro this, Giro that, Greg Roman, Greg Roman, Greg Roman. This receiver talk's been happening way before Greg Roman. This is a Ravens philosophy. This is on them way before Greg Roman. Because they could hire another offensive coordinator. They could bring in another offensive coordinator. But until they actually really change that philosophy that they have, where there's a lack of emphasis put on the passing game, a lack of emphasis put on the wide receivers, then it could end up being a lot of the same old stuff. But let's continue and get back to the article. It says, because Lamar Jackson is a great player to play with, he's all about the team. He's fun. He brings the energy every single day. You want to play with quarterbacks like that, but the system pushes guys away. Yes, we know that. We are very well aware of that. It's crazy. When you hear NFL players say something that you have been saying yourself, it's like, oh, Okay. Well, we all saw the same thing. So <laughs> I didn't really think it took any rocket science to see this. So anyway, keep it moving. Um, the system push, pushes guys away. But that's why the Ravens are always drafting two receivers every year. They keep them young. See, this is where Willie Sneed didn't just talk about the Ravens offense, but he, he's de digging into the philosophy now too because he's talking about their strategy. So this is not just, he's not just speaking about Greg Roman. He's talking about Eric DaCosta here as well. 
Uh, they keep them locked in on contracts, but for an older veteran guy coming in, he might get one shot to do this. I don't know if the Ravens are going to be that one shot for them unless you're a tight end or a big body receiver who can win those 50-50 balls. So back to the, uh, the contract talk. It's true. Uh, a lot of people have said it that for Ravens to get a receiver, you got you to gotta hold somebody hostage. You got to hold somebody hostage. And basically meaning that you, you got to draft guys. Because when it comes to free agents, people ain't going to openly sign here. And I, I know a lot of Ravens fans, they, they, they put it in their minds like it's almost like they try to prepare themselves for receivers not wanting to sign here. And they, they say, hey, well, if that receiver wants to win, then he'll come here. They don't, want to, they don't say, oh, if, if he wants to catch a bunch of passes, if he wants to be a phenomenal wide receiver. No, they say if that receiver wants to win, then he'll come here. If he turns us down, he doesn't want to win. And I feel like that thinking is just it's sort of just to try to protect yourself from being let down because, you know, receivers, they they don't want to come here. They just simply don't. Ravens have been uh, it's, there been even instances where Ravens have offered more money than other teams. And the receivers still said, no, I'm straight. I'm good off that. No, thank you, Baltimore. That says a lot. That says a whole lot. But let's talk about a receiver that not only said no thank you, but he was actually drafted here. So he was here for a couple years. He even had some success. But he said and continued to say, I want out. Hollywood Brown knows he's up for a contract soon. So he says, get me the heck out of here. And Willie Sneed's response to that was, I know. He had to do what was best for him. I don't blame him. He's been frustrated the past couple seasons. He has a contract coming up, and he wants to put himself in the best position to get paid. And yeah, it's true. Because had he stayed with the Ravens, he still could have gotten paid. But it wouldn't have been top wide receiver money. Because he wouldn't be looked at if he remained with the Ravens as a top wide receiver. He wouldn't. There was a possibility that he was he was up there. He could be up there with numbers and stuff. Um, but he knew that the, the consistency just wasn't going to come from the Ravens. Now, with the Cardinals, he's going over there and he's going to essentially be the number two guy. Now, he'll get to be number one for a couple weeks because DeAndre Hopkins is, is out. Uh, oh, but when DeAndre Hopkins comes back, that'll open it up for him that much more. Uh, but yeah, for if, if you are getting ready to get paid, especially since you're getting ready to get paid, you want to maximize your value to whatever team you're going to be on. You want to maximize your earning potential. And Hollywood must not have felt like it would be maximized with the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Tyler asked, uh, when you say night and day, when referring to the offenses, what does that look like as a receiver? What does a Sean Payton offense look like with those route concepts versus what you had in Baltimore? Well, he sneezed, said a lot more motion, shifting, trying to create matchups, get those one on one matchups in space. I know Sean wasn't big into play action off the run game, but he'll get into that empty set and go five wide and start throwing different types of concepts at you that make defenses start to bite. And here comes a wide open hole across the middle. That's game plan specific. That's Sean Payton, John Gruden. Those guys are from Bill Parcells all the way down. That's the tree right there. That's the offense for them. Greg Roman is just more run heavy. He's got misdirection. He's got play action. He's got power game. He'll be a heck of a run game coordinator in somebody's offense. But I just think the passing game needs a little bit more juice. It's kind of been like that for the past couple of years is something they do. My goodness, this is every single thing that so many Ravens fans have been saying. This is why I always tell people, do not discredit fans when they speak on stuff just because they're fans just because somebody's not a professional football player it does not mean that you can discredit their word just because somebody hasn't played in the league before it does not mean what they're saying is invalid this from willie sneed somebody who played in this system he's saying literally everything that you hear ravens fans say especially the part about He'll be a heck of a run game coordinator. 
in somebody's offense. You know how many times, especially over these past couple of months, in all these Twitter spaces and stuff, and comment section of YouTube, how many times I've heard people say, oh, Greg Roman, he's an excellent run game coordinator. You, I know y'all have heard that so many times too. I Whoa, boy, I can't even count the number of times I heard that. But this is coming directly from somebody who's in the league, in the NFL, and played under that system. Moving on. He said it's tough. The tight ends get more creativity than the receivers. That's true. It's a tight end friendly offense. No tight ends. And this, this offense, they're going to eat. Wide receivers, they hungry. Uh, I don't want to say the play calling in itself, but when you're putting it, when you're putting in plays versus certain defenses, you know what certain stuff is going to work and what isn't going to work. So every week has to be a brand new game plan for this specific team. Now, if you're just copying and pasting from one week to the other, you see in the NFL, these defensive coordinators are great. So if they see something once or see it twice, they're going to lock in that they're going to lock that in and you probably won't be able to get that in time. You've got to be able to shift guys around and have different motions to make it look like one thing and it's completely different. Those type of coaches take it to the next level, like Sean McVay and Matt LaFleur. Those guys, those guys put guys in position. They'll shift and motion guys to identify that matchup and then exploit it. Those are the offenses I would like to be in. And I know Hollywood is in that spot now where you can showcase all of your talent, all of your passing game, not just the run game. My goodness. My goodness. Willie Sneed, you, you, you saying everything that we all been saying. To, you saying everything. Willie Sneed here talked about adjustments. But you know what was crazy? I don't know if y'all caught it. The part where he said, those type of coaches take it to the next level, like Sean McVay and Matt LaFleur. Those guys put guys in position. He moved up. He moved up from offensive coordinators to head coaches. I don't know if we caught that one. Anyway, moving on. He was also asked, how do you keep your head? That is the prime of your career, and how do you now get a second wind? Uh, Willie Sneed responded, in it, I was just having fun. We had great teammates. I just maximized my role for what they wanted me to do. I came to work every day being that professional, leading the young guys. That's true. And we were winning games at the time. I'm all about the team. It's one thing to be winning games and you contribute here and there. It's another to lose games. It's a different feeling. When you're winning, everything's good. I think that 2019, 2020 year, I knew my role in that offense. It wasn't going to be anything different. I just had to do what I had to do to make it work. Uh, when you have great players around you in the run game, and the past game, you just want to find a place to help the team. That's what Baltimore's always been about. Team, team, team. So there you go. That, that's a good thing. Uh, when I went there, I fit into the mold. I was a vet, so guys leaned on me in certain situations. But I just always came to work ready to go. I didn't really have an attitude whether I had five catches here or two catches the last game. I just always knew that every week was a new week, a new opportunity coming. That's how you always have to look at it. Whatever team you go to, you have to have that mind. You have to have that mindset every week is a new week and your opportunity is going to be that next opportunity. That's what always kept me in it. So he talked about how every week is a new week. Um, but in the, the previous question, he talked about how you cannot just copy and paste what you did the previous week, the previous game. You can't just take that into the next game and be like, all right, let's run it. The Ravens, they cannot be stubborn. And this is for offense and defense. And just really the, the whole team as a whole. Last year, I know we're talking about offense right now, but last year, Wink was, love Wink, but a lot of times he was very stubborn as a coach. And what I mean when I say that is that the, the situational awareness and, and, and realizing and recognizing the guys that you have out there and realizing and recognizing the guys that you don't have out there. You didn't have Marcus Peters out there. And after a while, you didn't have Marlon Humphrey out there. You didn't have Deshaun Elliott out there. But he continued to put guys in islands. He continued to put guys in one-on-one -on -one situations where they should not have been in one-on-one -on -one situations. Your cornerbacks were Robert Jackson, Kevon Seymour, Kevin Tolliver, it was rough out there, Chris Westry. And not to say anything bad about those guys, but they were not just starters. But he treated them as if they were starters. And not to say you can't give a nice little confidence boost to your guys, but you got to realize what the situation is. With Greg Roman, flipping it back to the offensive side. He's spoken about it. 
this offseason in the press. So just the other day, he said, we got to adapt. We got to adjust. We got to evolve in the offense. You cannot be set in your ways. Greg Roman said that. He said that. So it's so important that this offense do that. But it's even more important that this entire team does that. This entire coaching staff, not just the offensive coordinator. Because, again, it's easy to be like Greg Roman this, Greg Roman that. But this is an issue that's been going on long before Greg Roman even stepped foot as an offensive coordinator with the Baltimore Ravens. So it's so important that Ravens take a hard look at themselves and not just because of this Willie Sneed interview article. No, they should have been on this before. This is something that we've been saying early this offseason. Ravens need to take a hard look at their philosophy, a hard look at their philosophy, especially on offense. And they got to get with it. You don't have to rip up everything and tear it apart and start all over. No, you ain't got to do that. But you have to adapt. You have to evolve. You have to adjust. And like my guy Greg Roman said, you cannot be set in your ways.